NASCAR has seen its fair share of drivers come from all over the place, with the United States obviously being the main source of entries, particularly from the Midwest, Southeast, and Pacific Coast, there have been many that have stumbled onto the scene in history from other countries. We've seen many winners get produced outside North America, like Australia's Marcus Ambrose, Colombia's Juan Paul Montoya, and Italy's Mario Andretti. However, what does the counterpart of the United States have to offer? Canada does have its own national stock car racing series, I've mentioned it many times in previous videos, but the country has produced many drivers who have stumbled onto the scene in NASCAR's history in the top three national series. It's made me wonder a few times, who are and were the best of the best? Today, we'll be taking a look at who I believe are the top 10 greatest Canadian drivers to ever participate in NASCAR. There are two rules to this. Number one, they must have multiple starts in any of the top three national series, aka Cup, Xfinity, and Trucks, with a likelier chance of being higher if they try more than one of those three. Number two, both former and current drivers are allowed. I will also add that NASCAR experience compared to experience in like Formula 1 or IndyCar for example will help in having a better spot. I'm aware that using current ones may make this list seem very defunct down the line, and also this was extremely hard to make, so bear with me. Number 10, Larry Pollard. Out of the West Coast, Larry Pollard got into NASCAR driving with loads of experience from being a crew member in the early 1980s, helping out drivers such as fellow Canadian Roy Smith and legends such as Ricky Rudd, Phil Parsons, and none other than Richard Petty. He began his NASCAR racing career in 1985 with somewhat full-time rides between that year and 1987 in the Bush Grand National Series. Between those years, he scored one win, seven top fives, and 33 top tens in 96 starts, finishing 9th, 10th, and 13th in the standings respectively. With that one win, he sits with five other non-American drivers who have won in the Xfinity Series. His lone win came at Langley Speedway in 1987 where he led the final 46 laps after qualifying second, and he beat drivers such as Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin. Making fewer starts in 1988, Pollard was hit with a huge scare at that year's first Dover race with six laps remaining, as he went straight onto the turn three wall and obtained a basilar skull fracture. Although he was slightly awake after the incident, he still dealt with a short coma. Rather surprisingly, he recovered and returned to racing the next year, making five starts with zeros across the stat board. After one final start in 1990, he moved on to regional late model racing in North Carolina, where he now resides, and he also did some commentary for the Bush Grand National Series along the way. It was quite the journey for Pollard, and his love for racing no matter what kind of competition he was involved in was always noticeable. Number 9, Earl Ross. Holding the crown as Atlanta Canada's only NASCAR driver to make starts in the top three series, Earl Ross also holds the crown for being the only Canadian driver and one of four non-American drivers to score a win in the Cup Series. He moved to Ailsa Craig, Ontario for more opportunities, becoming a driver at local short tracks across the province. In 1973, he gave the Winston Cup Series a shot, qualifying for the 1973 Daytona 500 and finishing 39th. He ran two more races and continued running part-time driving for Alan Brooke, making six starts in the number 52 Chevrolet. After the first Michigan race in late August, he had extremely impressive stats, two top fives and three other finishes just outside the top 10. This gave attention to some team owner named Junior Johnson, who signed Ross for the remainder of the season, and what resulted was unbelievable. A win at Martinsville, three top fives and eight top tens and 15 starts for Junior Johnson. To add on, that win came from leading 79 laps and beating the likes of Buddy Baker and Donnie Allison. That earned him Rookie of the Year honors. Weirdly enough, Ross made only two more starts within the next two years and never saw NASCAR action ever again, returning to Ontario for regional racing. He sadly passed away in 2014 in the same place he grew up. As the only Canadian to have ever won a cup race, he rightfully deserves a spot on this list, despite his short run. Number 8, Raphael Assard. The first of multiple current drivers on this list, Raphael Assard has had quite a strange career so far. With a ton of success in Canadian regional racing and in the Cars Late Model Tour for David Gilliland Racing, while also part of the Toyota Racing Development Program, he was called by none other than Kyle Busch for the 2019 Truck Series season, making three starts along with also driving for DJR Crossley. He would be given a full-time opportunity at Kyle Busch Motorsports in the well-known number 4 Toyota for the 2020 season. Although we only managed 4 top 5s and 7 top 10s in 23 races, while also missing the playoffs, he did score his first career win at the Talladega playoff race, beating Trevor Bain by inches in a yellow flag finish. Being replaced by John Hunter Nemechek in 2021, he moved on to GMS Racing, driving the number 24 Chevrolet with hopes of running full-time, and the first four races were absolutely abysmal based on finishes. Although his stage results were excellent, the final finish was just never there for him. With one top five and two top tens heading into race eight at Darlington, the team announced that Lassar would be done for the year after he had failed to obtain funding. Despite the disappointment, he returned to Canada and scored two wins and three starts in the Pinty series, before what can I only imagine was a break. Kind of like what happened to Caden Lapsevich, Lassard was also hit hard by the unfortunate circumstances of finances. Hopefully an opportunity arises for him in the future at some point. 
Number 7. Patrick Carpentier Mainly an open-wheel driver that saw lots of success in Champ Car during the late 90s and early 2000s, amassing 5 wins and 2 points positions of 3rd, Carpentier decided to take a shot at NASCAR beginning in 2007. He was signed by Fitz Bradshaw Racing to drive the number 22 Bush Series Chevrolet at Circuit Gills Villeneuve, finishing 2nd in a controversial race. The circuit would see him make starts for the next 5 years driving for multiple different teams with a constant poor result. Along with making 16 Xfinity Series starts, Carpentier was signed by none other than Ray Everham to drive for his Cup Series team towards the later parts of 2007, scoring a best 22nd in Watkins Glen with 3 starts. In 2008, he was moved up to full-time in the number 10 Valvoline Dodge, replacing a lackluster Scott Riggs. Unfortunately, Carpentier would also turn out lackluster, failing to qualify for the Daytona 500 along with 4 other races, and only scoring 3 finishes above 20th. He was let go after the fall Talladega race and only made a few more starts in later years, calling it quits after 2012, although he did make two starts in 2016 to clarify. Carpentier wasn't an excellent driver by any means, I mean he's quite literally been called a bust by many people, but the pedigree surrounding his open wheel career and getting a good chance in the top NASCAR series does make him deserve some praise for at least trying. Number 6. Alex Tegliani Tegliani is mainly known for his diversity across multiple forms of motorsports, from Champ Car and IndyCar to NASCAR including 8 attempts at the Indy 500 with the pole in 2011. He first got into NASCAR with the Pinty Series starting in 2007, scoring a win in 2008. His first top National Series start came at Circuit Gills Villeneuve in 2009, driving for McDonald Motorsports in the number 81 Dodge, finishing 26th, along with getting another run at Phoenix later in the year. A few more road course starts in the early to mid 2010s saw many good finishes, along with one time where he won the pole at Mid-Ohio in 2015 driving for Team Penske. It looked like he had the win in the bag towards the end, but a last lap final corner bump and run by Regan Smith caused him to fall just short, and I'm personally still salty about it. He gave the truck series one attempt per year from 2014 till 2020 driving for three different teams, with five of them being a Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, finishing a best second place in 2019 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Across all the types of motorsports he drove in, he either came too short of a win or too short of a championship. Thus, I personally refer to him as the Mark Martin of Canadian racers. Currently, he continues to run full-time in the Pinty Series, and after 8 straight full-time seasons, he still has yet to finally earn the title. Number 5. DJ Kennington One of the more well-known stock car drivers in Canada, DJ Kennington has an incredibly large resume in Canadian racing. 9 straight full-time years in the era of cast car, specifically 1998 till 2006, with 7 wins and 83 starts, including 4 championship positions of 3rd or better. When Cascar shifted over to the Canadian Tire Series, it was once more with the consistent full-time runs, and he still races to this day, having two championships and 23 wins to his name. Kennington took his first look at the top national series with multiple runs from McDonald Motorsports in the Bush slash Nationwide Series between 2006 and 2009, scoring four top 20 finishes. With three starts combined for the Wick Rare Racing Team in the Truck Series in 2010 and 2013, Kennington didn't return back to any of the top series until 2016, driving from Premium Motorsports at the Phoenix Playoff Race. After that, he made multiple starts for both that team and Gaunt Brothers Racing in 2017 and 2018, including qualifying for both Daytona 500s with a best finish of 24th and scoring two top 20s and seven starts for Gaunt Brothers. Ever since, he has continued to run in the Pinty Series and hasn't made a single start in any of the top national series. Being an extremely appreciated driver and mentor, this one feels a bit odd due to his success in Canada, but again, the top 3 National Series rule applies. Number 4. Alex LeBay Once again, another current Quebec driver, Alex LeBay dominated in regional racing series across the province during the early 2010s, eventually joining the Pinty Series for a few runs between 2012 and 2015. While running for Gulf Fast Racing for the 2016 and 2017 seasons, which includes 6 wins and a championship, Canadian NASCAR team owner Mario Gosselin came calling in giving LeBay three starts in total between 2016 and 2017 in the Xfinity Series, scoring a best finish of 23rd. In 2018, he was moved up to full-time in the number 36 Chevrolet, where he had a pretty decent season, collecting one top 10 and 17 finishes inside the top 20 within 33 starts, with a final points position of 17th. For a car at DGM Racing, those stats are actually quite impressive. He's kept his ride with the team ever since, where he's had many respectable runs, especially on the road courses, which are his prime tracks. Most notably at the rain-drenched 2020 Charlotte Roval playoff race, after qualifying 16th, he made his way to the front as multiple cars either wrecked out or had mechanical problems, finishing 4th in a race that had an average of just 4 green flag laps. As one of the major underdogs in the Xfinity series now, there's no doubt that LeBay could sneak a win sometime down the line, or maybe even a better ride. Number 3. Stuart Friesen Born near Niagara Falls, Ontario, Stuart Friesen moved to the United States along with his family to begin his career in racing. 
With much success in both go-karts on asphalt and multiple different cars on dirt, he got his big shot in NASCAR with what was supposed to be a one-off at Eldora Speedway in 2016, driving for Chris Larson's Hamera Racing Team in the Truck Series. After finishing 28th, Friesen managed to race just a little more, making 5 starts with 3 top 20 finishes. Before the 2017 season, the team had become Halmer Friesen Racing, with Friesen gaining Truck Series ownership along with obtaining a full-time ride in the number 52 Chevrolet. Although he missed 4 races due to team hiatuses and finalizing agreements in management and alliances, he had a very turbulent first year. After only scoring 1 top 20 finish in the first 7 races, Friesen then went on to score 2 top 5s and 5 top 10s in 12 races, with only 2 finishes below 20th and finishing 14th in the standings. 2018 and 2019 would be his breakout years as he scored 2 wins, 21 top 5s, 32 top 10s, and 2 poles, finishing 7th and 4th in the standings respectively. The past 2 seasons have seen some drops in performance, but nonetheless, Friesen has put up a solid truck series career thus far. I will mention that he did make one cup start in 2021 driving for Spire Motorsports at the Bristol Dirt Race alongside his wife Jessica, where he finished 23rd. Number 2. Ron Fellows The record holder of the most wins by a non-American driver in any of the NASCAR's top 3 national series, Ron Fellows has seen a lot of success in open wheel racing, particularly in IMSA and Le Mans with a 24 hours a Daytona win and a series championship, along with always being at the top of the board on roller courses when it came to stock cars. With a resume as a multi-time winner and champion in sports cars, he began to do the road course ringing starting in 1995, running a cup series race at Watkins Glen in 1995, finishing 35th. Beginning in 1998, he would do 14 straight years of running on the road courses in cup, whether it was at Sonoma Raceway, back then Sears Point and then Infineon, or Watkins Glen, scoring 3 top 5s and 5 top 10s in 22 races on the streak, most notably driving for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated at least 5 times. However, where he really hit it off were in the lower series, scoring 4 career wins in the Bush slash Nationwide series, with 3 at the Glen and 1 at Sergey Gilles Villeneuve, and 2 career wins in the Truck series, both at the Glen. Pretty much every time Ron Fellows was on the entry list for a road course race, the entire field would have to be prepared for what was to come next. As one of the best ambassadors of Canadian motorsports, he definitely deserves a spot at the top. With one more driver remaining, here are a few honorable mentions. The only Canadian driver with over 100 cup starts, so far, Trevor Boys. Four-time Arkham Menard Series West Champion, Roy Smith. Current team owner and driver for DGM Racing, Mario Gosselin. McDonald Motorsports team owner and driver, Randy McDonald. 2006 Cascar Super Series Champion and Xfinity Series Road Course Ringer, J.R. Fitzpatrick. And finally, multi-time Pinty Series Champion and Arkham Menard Series winner, Andrew Ranger. Number 1. Jacques Villeneuve As a champion in both Formula 1 and IndyCar and a winner of the Indy 500, Jacques Villeneuve gets his proper placement at the top of the list. An incredibly successful driver in all forms of motorsports, Villeneuve has got pretty much everything to his resume. Back when Williams Racing was the top team in Formula 1, he got the job done with 8 wins plus a championship in 1997, along with 11 career victories and 163 starts. When he gave IndyCar a shot back during its times as cart, he won 4 races en route to a championship in just his second full-time season. He tried the Indy 500 3 times and got on the podium in 1994 and 1995, along with winning in 95. Hell, he won a Le Mans race in 2008. In terms of NASCAR, Bill Davis Racing gave Villeneuve a call in 2007, putting him in the number 27 Toyota in both the Cup and Truck Series for a few runs. He would also attempt to make the Daytona 500 in 2008, but failed alongside fellow Canadian Patrick Carpentier. After that, he made a few select starts in the early 2010s in both the Cup Series and Nationwide Series, most notably with his consistent runs in Nationwide at tracks such as Circuit Gills Villeneuve and Road America. The closest he came to winning a race was at the final race at Circuit Gills Villeneuve in 2012, where it seemed like victory would come by by the final lap, but a loss of fuel caused him to fall to third. After that, he made one more Cup start and hasn't raced ever since. He did return to some form of NASCAR in 2019, driving full-time for Go Fast Racing in the Wheel and Euro Series. Interestingly enough, the recent offseason for the Cup Series saw Villeneuve, along with 2021 Euro Series champion Loris Haysmans, announce that they would form a team for the 2022 season called Team Hesburgh, so you will expect to see Villeneuve continue racing. The man is 50 right now, and yet he'll be here when the next gen car arrives soon. Speaking of it, just recently he has confirmed his plans to attempt the Daytona 500. What other giant accomplishments can he possibly achieve? That right there solidifies his spot at number one. He just won't ever stop. Anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Like the list? Dislike it? Sound off in the comments. Don't forget to click the like button, hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else, and share this with your buddies to get the word out. My name's Reegzer, or Reeks for short, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.